What's up, guys? It's Giovanni. We're back. Uh, we're playing the Anne Frank House. Uh, it's an old uh, vintage uh, uh, VR game slash educational program. It allows you to uh, visit the Anne Frank House as it was uh, back during the uh, Nazi occupation of the Netherlands in Amsterdam. Uh, this is the Anne Frank House. Uh, we're in the front uh, room uh, where most of the business of Opecta was conducted. Uh, you see uh, uh, Bep Vosko, Miep Gies, and uh, Mr. Kleinman uh, where they sat. And we've been clicking on items and trying to uh, capture all the green elements of the uh, of the room so we can cover all the elements that are actually clickable and learnable and they have uh, presentations that's how the program operates basically you click around and you try to find all the green uh, so let's see if we can find I think we got all the ones in here I think yes yeah, so let's go to the back room Creepy. Instructional film. Laboratory. Mr. Kugler's office. Let's check out the film. One piece of equipment in the office is a film projector. The film you see was used as instructional material. It shows how somebody can make jam in 10 minutes. Meep Geese is the instructor in this silent film. It was used during gatherings of housewives and someone was always present to provide an explanation of the process. In addition to his work with meat seasonings, Victor Kugler tries to make new cosmetics. First, he carries out his experiments in the annex, but when the area has to be used as a hiding place, he moves his laboratory to his own office and to the office kitchen in the annex. Okay. On Friday of every week, Victor Kugler, Anne calls him Mr. Kugler, brings her the latest issue of Cinema and Theatre, a magazine filled with film and theatre news. Anne's greatest interest is in the cinema. When Bep has been to the films, Anne can tell her exactly who the actors were and what the film's plot is. Anne also hangs some of the photos from the magazine on her wall. To prevent Opecta and Pecticon from falling into German hands, Otto is able to get both companies registered in the name of two of his employees, Kugler and Kleimann. The meat seasonings firm Pecticon is replaced by the firm Hies and Company. Kugler is its registered director and Jan Gies its commissioner. A sign with the new company's name is mounted on the front wall. Machines, equipment and supplies are all sold to Hees and Company for a trifling amount, and Pecticon is closed down. In this way, the firm can continue to do business without interference or fear of confiscation by the Germans. 
On the 12th of December, 1941, Otto Frank resigns as director of OPECTA. Kleiman officially takes over the management from that moment on by registering as OPECTA's director. In reality, Otto Frank is still running OPECTA, but because of measures against Jewish citizens, he's unable to turn up at the office so often. When, six months later, Anne begins her diary, she writes of her father. Anne writes that her father doesn't go to the office very often anymore, now that Apecta has been taken over by Mr. Kleiman and Geese and Company by Mr. Kugler. She thinks her father must feel sad at being forced to stay at home, feeling redundant. Forced labor. Towards the end of the war, Victor Kugler is summoned to report to the Werkverschaffing, the Department of Forced Labor, in his hometown of Hilversum. Anne is afraid that something will happen to her helper. From her diary, we know that Kugler, to everyone's relief, is able to find a trustworthy physician who gives him a medical certificate. This states that Kugler cannot obey the summons for medical reasons. Towards the end of the German occupation of the Netherlands, more and more men are forced to go to work for German companies and the German army. This is called Arbeitsdienst. The work is heavy and tiring, and the men receive little or no pay. Due to poor treatment and the dangers of war, thousands of Dutch men die while in Arbeitsdienst. On Victor Kugler's original identity card, it can be seen that he was born in Austria. During the First World War, he served in the Austrian Navy on the Adriatic Sea. In the 1930s, Kugler is commissioned by the German company Pomozin to establish a branch in Amsterdam. He's not successful in this endeavor, and the Opecta license is given to Otto Frank in 1933. Kugler then becomes Otto's employee. Surprisingly empty room. Not a lot of stuff going on here. Let's go to the hallway. They have that room all blocked off. Goes to the rear office. Okay, I guess it wants us to go back there. Staircase. Coal bunker. Just before uh, after Anne Railo. notes that the house has sufficient supplies of coal and firewood. These are delivered to the office. Anne notes that the house has sufficient supplies of coal and firewood. These are delivered to the office. He's very quiet. Creeping like a cat is how she describes him in a fun poem she writes for him in December 1943. Guess he's making the coal runs. 
before they had uh, propane and eating oil. Let's see. First floor rear. Office kitchen. Oh, why not office kitchen? In the kitchen, surrogates are tested and mixed. Due to the war, the international trade of herbs and spices has stopped. Pecticon, which makes meat seasonings, must therefore begin using substitutes, so-called surrogates. These are made from nettles and apricot and plum pits. It's like, uh, what is that? When uh, people wanted to drink soda back then, uh, after the German occupation, the Nazi occupation, uh, what was it? Uh, Coca-Cola stopped uh, some kind of import ban in Germany, so they made another soda called Fanta. Uh, is that orange soda, I believe? It's a uh, a uh, soda made out of necessity, it's the uh, the lack of uh, the uh, homegrown German soda. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure about it, though. Do uh, double check on that Fanta. Fanta soda. Whoops. We covered that. Nice vacuum there. Looks pretty accurate. Actually more stuff here than there in that photo. Bathing. What do I mean by bathing? Come on. It's like threading a needle here. The office kitchen is the only place in the house with warm water, supplied by a geezer. Here, the people in hiding can fill a pan and wash themselves from head to toe. And this, they can only do on Saturdays and Sundays because of the noise. On the 29th of September, 1942, Anne describes how everyone chooses their own spot where they can take a bath without being seen by others. Peter takes his bath in the kitchen. Before going, he tells everybody to stay out of the way because through the glass door, one can see everything. Mr. Van Pels prefers his own room. To take his bath there, he has to carry buckets of water up the stairs. Daddy chooses his private office as his place to wash. Mummy makes do behind a screen in the kitchen. Margot and Anne choose the office at the front. Saturdays, the curtains in the office are drawn. Later on, Anne changes to the large office toilet. There she can sit in a tub quietly and safely. Do what you gotta do. Nature calls, you take a bath in the tub. Not fun, I guess. Alright guys, we'll come back after the break. We'll play more of this, uh, the Anne Frank house and check out other parts of the house and more rooms.